Hello and welcome to the sideboard here at GP Richmond. I am Nick Miller alongside Cam Adkins. He is a SCG notable grinder, top eight of the Indianapolis Invitational. How are you doing? It's always a pleasure, Nick. Now, the SCG live viewers know you from the Open Series, but you're here rocking a innovative new twin list that you're calling Turbo Twin. Yeah, we, uh, we call it Turbo Twin because there was a, a green Tarmogoy version of the twin deck that came out, and they called that Tarmo Twin. Yes. Since we're running a, a two converted mana cost green card that isn't Tarmogoy, if we had to name it something else, so we now, sped it up. This is a spicy list. You're, you know, you're not using Scavenging Ooze or Tarmogoy. You're using a little card from Theros Block, Commune with the Gods. So so I brought my draft chode with me today. Um, we we figured out, and I actually didn't build the deck, a friend of mine named Pat innovated the, the deck. He figured out that Commune with the Gods hits every piece of the twin combo, including the creatures like Kiki Jiki and Splinter Twin, but also the, the enablers like Deceiver X Arc and Pestermite. So it lets you filter through your deck with five cards at a time in a format where like Ponder is banned, so that's really a powerful ability. Getting to dig five cards deep for any of your combo pieces seems pretty good. Now another thing, you're using the green for the, you know, accelerants. You've got Birds of Paradise, Noble Hierarch here. Explain what the man accelerants can do to this type of deck. Well, so the traditional twin list launches on turn four at its quickest, so it's called Turbo Twin because it's faster. And Noble Hierarch just serves as like Birds of Paradise 5 through 7. We'd run 7 birds if we could, but we needed 7 mana accelerants to consistently go off on turn 3. It enables the deck to play Pestermite on turn 2 instead of turn 3, and then follow up with Splinter Twin the next turn. So uninterrupted, we Goldfish win on turn 3. Also, if it is interrupted, my favorite part of this deck, 3 Pact of Negation main deck. Yes. Um, when you're this into the combo, it's important to be able to protect your combo, and when you don't have any mana left over going for it that quickly, you need a way to say no to a Lightning Bolt or a Path to Exile, and Pact of Negation doesn't really have a drawback in the deck, it's, it's free force of will, because if you don't win when you go off on turn three, you've spent so much energy and so right. many resources going for it that you're going to lose the game anyway, right. so. Irrelevant <laughs> if you don't pay the upkeep cost. Exactly. Right. Also, you're using Swan Song in the main deck. Talk about the uses you can use that for. Swan Song is just really powerful in the modern format right now. It just wrecks Living End because they go for it and they wind up with a 2-2 instead of their main deck strategy and they don't run any protection. Right. So it's okay against combo decks. It's obviously great for protecting our combo. It's really good for that crucial storm piece that they're going that either is the the one that they need to, to launch in into to going for it or it's it's just a powerful card that counters everything and when you're playing a deck as into the combo as this, the two two is irrelevant, so it's right. a really powerful one mana counter spell. Yeah, that's what's so interesting is you're no longer on the beat down path at this deck. You are right. full force comboing out, doesn't matter. If you don't combo out, the rest right. of the cards don't matter anyway. Yes. So you're just pedal on the pedal to the metal, just exactly. twinning out. Also, talk about your mana base. You've got Desolate Lighthouse and Firelit Thicket. Explain the uses for both cards, especially how good Firelit Thicket right. is for the disguise factor. Yes, so so you don't have to play out your red mana in those early turns. If you have a Firelit Thicket, you can fetch for Stomping Grounds on turn one, follow up with a Mana Dork. Everybody assumes that you're a zoo deck, probably Kibler's big zoo list. Right. Then they'll perhaps play in such a way that when you flash in your, your guy on turn two, you can tap down the relevant mana source and leave them defenseless. And then they're like, well, what is he doing? And you come out with Fire Look Thicket, turn your Stomping Grounds or your Breeding Pool, if you go that route, into two red, make Splinter Twin out of nowhere, and it can be very confusing. Desolate Lighthouse is a one of, but it's, it's really powerful card filtration. Again, in a format where card filtration is frowned upon, right. and it won for one. So we looked at Faithless Looting, but we didn't like losing card advantage. So on the turn that you don't have to go for it, since you're not investing resources, it lets you kind of have a free dig spell. And it's really good. It was great in standard back in Innistrad block, and, and then everyone forgot about it. Well, the main deck looks pretty solid. Talk about some of your cyborg choices, including the uh, Counterflux, Beast Within, and Go in depth with Fire Spout. Okay, so uh, so the interesting sideboard choices like uh, Echoing Truth and Beast Within are not very complicated at all. There are a lot of things that shut down the twin combo because it's so popular, so you need a way to deal with Poker Orb, you need a way to deal with Limvala. You don't necessarily have to destroy those things, you just have to get them off the battlefield. 
It also gives you game against like the goblin tokens that Storm will make post board, but those aren't very interesting. Scavenging Ears is just a great card for the fair matchups, but Fire Spout is particularly interesting. We tested with Anger of the Gods, and it was always upsetting how Anger of the Gods would either kill our mana dorks or kill our pester might. And if you have Deceiver X Arc, it's relevant, but you can't always live in Magic or Christmas Land. So Fire Spout is versatile because against robots, you can kill their flyers and keep your mana dorks against other mana accelerating decks. You can kill their mana dorks and not your pester might. So it's it's more versatile than Anger of the Gods with a deck that just doesn't care about exiling your opponent's creatures. Like, we're never going to die to a Voice of Resurgence token. We were going to lose that game anyway. So it gives you game against the decks without killing your own creatures. And Fire Lip Thicket just helps you filter your mana in such a way that you can cast it without killing your guys. Yeah, the versatility from Fire Spout in this deck looks really good. And then Counterflux for the Storm matchup. It is what it is. We can't run Fluster Storm in Modern. <laughs> Alright, well this deck looks like a delight. Uh, I want to thank you for coming to the sideboard, yeah. showing me this sweet Turbo Twin build. For Cam Atkins, I'm Nick Miller in the sideboard. Stay tuned for more action here at GP Richmond.